In today's video, we're gonna be retesting the 10400 and testing that with 2666 megahertz speeds at both CL16 and then a little custom tune on that CL16 to drop it down to as far as it can go to see how much extra FPS we can get. Because apparently with the H410 and B460 motherboards, this is going to be the speed limit on your memory in terms of what you can get it to with the i5-10400. And so in a recent video that Gamers Nexus did, he capped the speeds on the memory and he showed a significant drop in FPS and that caused him to not recommend the CPU. And then subsequently from there, people uh, pretty much came into my comments section saying that my video was completely wrong, my recommendation's bad, I should redo the video. And here we are today, redoing the test for you guys. So let's just get straight into it. Basically we tested with a 2080 Ti, which again is a little bit overdone for these six core 12 thread CPUs, especially at 1080p, but we are painting the worst case scenario with these results. And what we can see in Ghost Recon is uh, dropping it down to 2666 megahertz, uh, both a CL16 from the XMP profiles and then a custom tune was that the FPS was still absolutely fine. And uh, in fact, I saw a higher minimum here out of all the testing I've done on this game with uh, sort of like a, a weird thing that happened on the 2666 custom tune there at CL14. And then moving over to Shadow of the Tomb Raider, we did uh, extract some more FPS with that custom tune again. We go to Fortnite, we saw actually the exact same average FPS here. So the uh, 2666 megahertz was the limiting factor itself in this particular title. Move over to Resident Evil 3, we saw some pretty good FPS out of this game. And then move over to GTA 5, we gained a few FPS on this custom tune. And then Warzone was pretty much in line with all the rest of the CPUs and their memory speeds here. So basically there's the gaming numbers for you. And you may notice, okay, your Ryzen 5 3600 isn't performing as well as some other people are showing. And that's because we tested with 3200 megahertz CL16. Now the difference between CL16 and CL14, this is actually an important thing to pull up and mention, is that one set of memory uses Samsung BDI memory, and that's actually quite a bit more expensive. At least when I check in the local retailer prices here, you can pay an extra 80 Aussie dollars over the CL16 3200 megahertz stuff. And so in America, that would be around 50 USD. And that's a big chunk if you're on a budget, just trying to get a budget motherboard and a six core Ryzen 5 3600 or a 10400 or a 10400 F. And so when I speak to the retailers and I ask them about this stuff here, they tell me that this is the most commonly sold memory and that is 3000 uh, megahertz XMP CL16 and 3200 megahertz CL16. It outsells the 3200 megahertz CL14 and 3600 megahertz CL16 by quite a big margin. And so when I talk to the retailers and I get this data in, at least in Australia, I then base my testing on the most commonly used memory with a commonly used setup for budget users. So basically coming out of this video, my recommendation still stands the same, though I do apologize for missing out the 2666 test in the original video. But basically, if you're in the market for a six core 12 threaded CPU, you cannot go wrong buying the 10400 or the upcoming 10400F or the Ryzen 5 3600. They're amazing value for money CPUs. They've got included coolers that do the job out of the box. Now, of course, you can overclock the Ryzen 5 3600, but in my tests, I wouldn't really bother doing that with the included race stealth. I'd go out and get a better custom cooler, which would keep the temperatures down and allow for better overclocks. So then we're adding in another element into the comparison if you wanna put that in there. Also in terms of the 10400F, that should come in roughly $20 cheaper, making it around 160 USD, which will make it good value for money for pure gamers. Though of course, if you wanna utilize that iGPU, it's not actually completely useless. If you're into streaming, for example, and you wanna take a bit of a load off your GPU, if you're using that encoder, you can actually use the QuickSync encoder, probably gain around 5% FPS, because your GPU is now a little bit more freed up. And coming out of this, when it comes to tech reviews and getting recommendations, go and watch a heap of different reviews on the product before you make your decision and see which recommendation best matches your wallet. And that's my advice. And in terms of uh, my opinion differing from other reviewers, especially Gamers Nexus, that's his opinion. He's more than entitled to that, just like I'm entitled to my opinion. And I know in the past, this has differed. This is not the first time this has happened. And in the past with the 3500X, uh, my opinion on that was, at least with the AliExpress, $110 shipping price. That was amazing value for money, I thought. It was the best uh, value for money gaming CPU to get, and then they closed it off. But other tech reviewers thought it was real mediocre. They didn't really think of it as a good CPU to go out and buy over the other options available. But basically when the 10400F is out and also H410 and B460 uh, motherboards are out, I'll retest the results again. Apparently there's rumors 
that you'll get a maximum speed of 2933 megahertz, which would uh, close the numbers ever so more and make that gap a little bit less. But for what it's worth, again, both good CPUs, you can't go wrong with either. Uh, and if that recommendation is not good enough for you, then I don't know what to say. But I do know what to say to this question of the day here, which comes from TikTok videos. And they ask, uh, basically, can you build us this PC? I'll pay you 300 US and you can ship it to me. And the answer to that is, uh, when I do builds here on the Gold Coast locally where I'm at, I don't ship them generally at all, uh, unless it's for like a friend of a friend who's living in Australia. Uh, in terms of international shipping a PC from Australia to overseas is just way too expensive. I wouldn't even look at the price. Like you're looking at around probably 150 US dollars shipping alone for the PC, maybe even more. And then there's the risk it suddenly gets damaged in shipping, which I've had in the past back in 2016, where I shipped a PC from Japan to someone in New Zealand, and that was a giveaway PC, and that got wrecked. So I generally don't ship, especially internationally. So I hope that answers that question. And if you guys enjoyed today's video, then be sure to hit that like button for us. And also let us know in the comments section below what you think of the whole uh, 10400, 10400F, Ryzen 5 3600. Love reading your thoughts and opinions as always. And I do want to thank you guys for also not being nasty in the comments. I mean, I did delete a few like nasty comments and I guess I don't want any of that coming around my channel. At the end of the day, I just, I'm a guy who does testing and from time to time I might make mistakes, I might be wrong, but I never will intentionally mislead people. That's something I don't do. Though enough rambling from me, I've got a lot to do before the end of the month as well as the used PC parts hunt. So if you wanna see these videos the moment they drop and you're not yet subbed, you can hit that sub button, ring that bell, get the content as soon as it's here at Tech Yes City. And I'll catch you in the next tech video very soon. Peace out for now, bye.